Welcome back to the Trenton Area Soup Kitchen and Adult Education and Word Preparedness Program YouTube channel. This is our Computer Basics Digital Literacy course. This course is for anyone new to computers and Microsoft Word. The class learning objective is starting Microsoft Word, learning about the ribbon, creating a document using spell check, importing a file, a picture, a chart, copy, cut, and paste, margin and tabs, keyboard shortcuts, using the status bar, saving your document, and finally closing out the document. Let's get started. Now turn on your computer and log on. So first you'll find the on button. On most computers, it is in the front of the computers but sometimes they're also on the top of the computer. That is a desktop. For the laptop computers, they are usually right above the keyboard and sometimes it's within the keys. Now this is a log on screen you'll see once you've turned on your computer. If there's multiple users, you'll be selecting the account that you normally use and then type in your password if it's just your computer, the screen will come up. Now that's only if you have created a logon password. So today we're doing introduction to Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word or MS Word is a word processing application. It's used to create documents, letters, training material, and homework. Word is one of the Microsoft Suite applications. Today we will use Word to create a document and learn the multiple functions within the application. Doc is a document file format used by Microsoft Word, also used with most word processing software, including Google Workspace. DOC stands for document file. A document file can contain formatted text, images, tables, graphs, charts, page formatting, and print settings. So now we're going to create a new document. Now there are three ways to create a new document. So you would click on the Windows icon, which would open up your Start menu. From there, you would find your Microsoft Word application. You would click on it. Now, after you've opened the application, it's going to be a new document that you'll be creating. So we'll take you to this window. And here, you would select Blank Document. Now you've created your new document. This is option one. Now that you've created your first document, you can create another document. Go to the Windows ribbon and click File. When you click File, it will take you to this window. This is option two. You will click on the New button and then select blank document. This is your third option to create a new document. Now that you're within the previous document you created, all you have to do is hold the control button on your keyboard and click the end key on your keyboard. This allows you to create a brand new document. The Word document ribbon. The bar at the top of each document is called the ribbon. The ribbon is a set of tools at the top of the window. A ribbon has commands that organize program features into a series of tabs. In Word, it is designed to help you quickly find commands you need to complete tasks. Now on the ribbon, there are several tabs. There's the Home tab, the Insert tab, and the Page Layout tab. 
In the Home tab, you have various commands such as the fonts, paragraph styles, and editing. Additional features that you can look into. The Insert tab, you can insert pictures, clip art, shapes, the page number, text, symbols, footers, the headers, and additional objects you can insert. And then you have the Page Layout tab. This tab allows you to control the look and the feel of the document. You can change the page size, margins, line spacing, indentation, documentation, orientation, whether it's um, a portrait or landscape, and various other features that you can set up. Now the ribbon also has the reference tab, mailing tab, review tab, and review tab. Take a look at these at a little later time and review them and use them as you're going through creating your documents. Document margin and tabs. In Microsoft Word, each page automatically has one inch margin. You can customize or choose predefined margin settings, set margins for facing documents, allow extra margin space to allow for document binding, and change how margins are measured. First, you would go to the ribbon, select layout, margin, select the margin configuration you want, or select a custom margin to define your own margins. Now you can use the predefined margins or you can create custom margins. You will go down to the bottom and select custom margin and then go into the page setup and create the margin that you want on the top and the bottom, the left or the right. To set tabs in your document, you would select paragraph as indicated in number one Go down to the tab section, as indicated in number two, and then go in and select your tab stop position. Now the default tab stop position is 0 0.5. If you'd like it to change, then you can go ahead and select from the options that are listed below and click OK. Now document spell check. Microsoft Word Spell Check. If the program finds spelling mistakes, a dialog box appears with the first misspelled word. It will alert you and give you the option to change the spelling, and it even has it where you can create a new spelling for a particular word, and it will save it in its dictionary. Now, while you are creating your document, it is best to always save as you go. So you would open the program, click the review tab on the ribbon, click spelling or spelling and grammar. That's your first option. You can also click the review tab on the ribbon and click editor, corrections and spelling. document status bar. So the document status bar is an area at the bottom of the window screen as highlighted in red that indicates information about the current document. It displays information about the page you're on as well as the line number on the page and the character number on the line. How many words are in the document and whether any proofing error were found. It also shows information about which editing toggles you have turned on. Document copy, cut, and paste. The copy, cut, and paste command is a great tool. It'll save you a lot of time. If you're in a document and you have a paragraph or even a page, you can copy that information and paste it into another document. So it's very useful. The cut command removes selected data 
from its original position, while the copy command creates a duplicate. In both cases, the selected data is kept in a temporary storage or a clipboard. The data from the clipboard is later inserted wherever a paste command is issued. So to copy, you would select the text you want to copy. You can go up to the ribbon and click copy. And then you can go to the document or in the same document in a, in a different area of the document and go back to the ribbon and click paste. Now to cut text, you would select the text, go up to the ribbon, click cut, and the text is removed. You can also use the shortcut keys that are listed in the end of the presentation. It'll save you time. So instead of going to the ribbon, you would just select the text that you want and you would do control C, which will copy the information you have selected and then control V to paste the information in the area or another document that you would like the information pasted. Insert and importing a picture, a file or a chart. So when you're inserting a picture, you would click insert on the ribbon. You would go to picture, select picture, and then there's a drop down menu. Now it'll ask you where you want to select it from. It could be on the device, which is your computer, or a flash drive, a temporary drive that you insert into the side of the computer, or you may have stock images or you can go online and select an image and insert that image into your document. Now inserting a chart, it's basically the same thing. You would go to the ribbon, click on insert, click chart, and then select the chart type that you would like. And you have many options. You've got a pie, you've got a line, you've got a bar, and you've also got column and a few other options to select from. Once you've decided which one you want to use, you would click OK. For this slide, you're going to insert a chart. Now a spreadsheet will appear. And what you will do is replace the default data on that spreadsheet with your own information. When you finish, you close the spreadsheet and use the layout option button to change the chart and text in your document so that you can organize it in the way that you would like to do. So the spreadsheet, as you see, is here on the page, and then the chart is here. So you've already selected the type of chart you wanted, and then the spreadsheet as it appears, you will go in and just remove the default information, such as under column A category, and replace it with whatever information you have. And then in series one, two, and three, under column B, C, and D, you would just go ahead and input your data into the information. Spreadsheets are not difficult to create. It's very simple. Just follow the steps and input your information into the spreadsheet. And the chart will display the information that you've entered onto the spreadsheet. Now you can also insert a file, another file, into your Word document. So first you would open up the document you would click the place in the document where you want the file to be inserted. You would click the insert tab at the top of the bar or the ribbon, and then select object, and then a drop down menu will appear. You would select from the drop down menu. Choose the file that you would like to insert into the current document. Now that file could be a PDF file, an image file, or any other type of non-text file into your Word document.
Now you can save your document. Now that you've created your document, let's save it. So click the File tab. You'll select Save As, and then you're going to pick or browse a folder. You're going to figure out where you would like the document to be saved. Now after you click Save As, you're going to select a location where you want to save your document. For today's demonstration, we're going to select the desktop. After you select the desktop, you will type in the name of the file. You're going to name your document and then click the Save button. Close the document. To close your document, you'll select the File tab. This window will appear and you'll simply click Close. This will close out your document. Congratulations! You have successfully created a Microsoft Word document, used some of the basic features and tools to make edits, save, and close your document. Resources There are keyboard shortcuts in Microsoft Word that help with editing and formatting your document and will speed up your workflow. So you will go back to the ribbon, click View and Macro. Type in List Commands. Click Run and click OK. And this will show you the different shortcut commands that are available to you and help you with keeping up with speeding up your workflow. Keyboard shortcuts in Word for editing and formatting your document. Now the shortcuts will save you a lot of time. As you see on the screen, you can create a new document. You would hold the control key and hit the end key. And you can also save your document. You would hold the control key and hit the S key. There are various others listed. On this slide, you see additional shortcut keys. Now here is another tip. It's a resource to help with inserting a chart. Now the tip says when you insert a chart, a small button appears next to its upper right hand corner. Use the chart elements plus button to show, hide, or format things like the access title or the data labels. Or you can even use the chart style button to quickly change the color or style of the chart. The chart filter is a little bit more advanced, so you may not be interested in using that, but at least you can go ahead and fix a chart and style it in the way you'd like. Below there's a link uh, to Microsoft uh, website and this will also help you with uh, setting up your chart and getting it styled the way you would like it. Now here are some skills that will help you to get more productive, increase your workflow, and get you accustomed to using the Microsoft Word application. And the more you practice, the better you get at things. So check out the list and uh, use them as you uh, work through the Word program. So this concludes the presentation video for Computer Basics Part 3, Introduction to Microsoft Word. I hope this video will help you in your progress and learning how to use uh, Microsoft Word. And if you have questions, you can reach out to me at TASK. If you're taking the course, please try and see if you can um, go back through the video in the presentation and figure out some of those um, questions that you have. And if not, just reach out to me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you find it useful. Next week, we start part four, Internet Basics, and I look forward to seeing you then.